What's going on guys, Vendor Vest here. Today I'm bringing you a review the Marvel Legends Fantastic Four Walgreens exclusive Invisible Woman. Man, I'm so happy that I found this figure. You know, I just graduated high school on Saturday. We had an all night party and you know, the next day I'm exhausted and me and my mom went to Walgreens and I was just walking. I was like, you know what, let me go to the toy aisle. I've been here in like two weeks and I look and I'm like, okay, they have Yellow Daredevil. Marvel Legends Phoenix, and then I see a four. I'm like, holy crap. So I pick it up, and it's Invisible Woman. And now this figure just came out, and I was like, I have to buy this right now. So I kept walking, and then I saw more. I saw a whole case, and I picked up the best one with the best paint apps. And I was so happy that I found it. You know, we haven't gotten a Fantastic Four character in Marvel Legends in like six years. And in Marvel right now, in the comics, the Fantastic Four have disappeared. And I have a huge feeling that's because of the movie rights. You know, Fox owns the Fantastic Four, and I'm hoping that we see them in the MCU. You know, we just saw the Watchers in Guardians of the Galaxy 2. So hopefully we might see them eventually, but I don't know, man. But anyways, looking at this packaging, looks really dope. Fantastic Four at the bottom, Marvel's Invisible Woman, see Sue Storm, Herbie, Marvel Legends series at the top. Here's an artwork by Jonathan Hickman. She looks really good there. I love how that looks. And you can see a picture of Herbie and Invisible Woman. And you know what? Hazard was getting better at their picture taking. I'll give them that. Not a bad photo right here. A little bit off the top. Notice how this is an individual figure. It's not in a wave. Hopefully we get a Fantastic Four wave. We're supposed to be getting a Johnny Storm. So... Maybe we'll get a box set or something or wave. I'm really hoping that we get something Fantastic Four related. But uh, yeah, all right, guys, let's open this up. I'll give you my opinion. Invisible Woman comes with one interchangeable hand. It's her hand turning invisible. So it's black and then to invisible. I like how it came out. You know, really good stuff. Good paint detail. Only thing I have a problem with is the peg is broken. So if you can see right there, you know, the peg is not fully in there and it came broken. And I don't really want to buy another figure, but. I'm gonna have to live with it or just fix it. The other accessory that Invisible Woman comes with is Herbie. If you don't know who Herbie is, Herbie is the assistant robot for the Fantastic Four. Funny thing is back in the 60s, you know, Human Torch was a part of the team on the Fantastic Four cartoon and parents did not want that to inspire their kids to light themselves on fire. So what they did was they replaced Human Torch and gave us Herbie. And a lot of people at the time were upset about that. Obviously I wasn't around, so it didn't really affect me and I think Herbie's a cool character. And this figure came out pretty cool. Like this head sculpt, he's smiling. You can see his head, it looks like a TV. Like the detail on the neck, the button right there. This belly thing. Smooth, shiny plastic. And he has a plug on the back. I think that came out pretty clean. His jets on the bottom and a peg hole. And he has one point of articulation. His head can look up, look down, side to side, left and right. Here's Herbie with the stand he comes with. This is actually not the first time we got a Marvel Legends Herbie figure. Here is the Marvel Legends Fantastic Four box set Herbie figure. And this figure looks like crap compared to this. You know, I like the detail. I like the four at the bottom. I like the, all the buttons. But this head sculpt, man. Like, look at that. His eyes and his mouth looks like ketchup. Whose man's is this? Tano looking Invisible Woman. This is a great figure. Hasbro made a huge improvement from the previous version. Looking at this head sculpt. Came out very beautiful. See the ears showing, the eyebrows. Only problem I have is you can see on the bottom lip she has like this weird highlight. I don't think it was blended in with the lipstick very well. But it is what it is. I like the short hair. She has like dirty blonde highlights and shading in the hair. I like how it's sculpted. Very attractive, man. See the four. It's not as comic accurate. It's usually it's like black. But they made it silver. I think it's pretty cool. I like the costume. It's a light blue. It's kind of hard to see on camera. This is the Kate Bishop mold. So she's athletic. She has her abs. Muscles in the leg. Nice butt. The boots. Very cool. And you can interchange the hand. Remember I got to squeeze it because mine is broken. And then you can interchange it with this one. That's pretty cool. I wish it came with two arms, you know, the clear one, and then a solid state so it's like this one, so she can be in like a relaxed state. So she's not invisible all the time. 
this is a really good figure. It was worth the wait, actually. I, I'm really happy that I have this. There's a peg on the back. Great stuff, man. The articulation on Invisible Manager stand a female articulation. Her hair looks up, it's down, side to side, left and right. From his back and forth, you have to move it up this way, like that, because there's extra plastic right there. And if I were to just move it up like that, it would scratch it right here. There's a swell at the arm and a single joint at the elbow. Wrist moves side to side, hand moves up and down. Diaphragm joint moves back, forward a little bit. No waist level, leg moves forward and back and out. Swell at the thigh, double joint knee, foot moves up and down, and a nice ankle pivot. So good articulation on this figure, man. Now, like I said earlier, this mold shares the same mold as Kate Bush Apaka, and I think it works perfectly. It's a slim, athletic build, and you can see that Ms. Marvel would have been way too big for Invisible Woman. I'm glad that they waited, and I think this mold would work perfectly for a calling wing. Looking at some other Invisible Woman figures, here is the Marvel Legends 2-pack Invisible Woman. And throughout the years, I thought this figure was okay, but now looking at it, it is terrible. Like, look at this head sculpt. I remember when Shardmus Prime reviewed this figure, he said it looked like a transvestite. And he was a wrong man. This figure is just really awkward. The body's awkward. The hand is super big. I do not like this figure. And right next to her is the Marvel Legends Fantastic Four box set, Invisible Woman. And at the time, I thought this figure was okay. Um, I like the costume. You know, I like the articulation. She's thick, and that's always a plus. But, you know, this head sculpt is terrible. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. That's terrible, man. Like, I hate this figure now looking at it. I'm not going to sell it, but it's just a terrible figure. And this has held up throughout the years. This came out in 2005. This is a Fantastic Four movie, Invisible Woman, the clear variant. And I love this figure, man. Like, it still works to this day. I still use this figure. It's in my movie collection, but I still like this figure a lot. And here she is with the rest of the Fantastic Four. I think this works pretty well. You know, the blues don't really match up. He has a lot darker blue, and the thing has a lot lighter blue for the pants. And this is the movie Human Torch, but we are getting the new one, so this will work for now. But if you don't want to use that Human Torch, then you can use the Ares Human Torch. But I love how this looks, man. I'm going to rate Invisible Woman a 9. I like how she came out. She fits in okay with the Fantastic Four, and she's showing up at your local Walgreens right now. If you guys are going to MegaCon, let me know. Um, I'm going only one day, and uh, let me know what day you're going, and I'll try and meet up with you. All right, guys. Take care. Peace. Crispy.